Hi there, my name is Lorcan, and if you're watching this video, you have already registered for UMITCast using your EO portal account. If you don't know what UMITCast is, it's a way to directly receive our data using a satellite link. You can sign up for UMITCast registration using an EO portal account. In this video, I'm going to guide you through the different stages to setting up a UMITCast station. Our first step is going to be assembling our antenna. We've chosen our antenna size based on the footprint of the satellite and our geographical location. We have chosen a one meter antenna. The reason we've chosen a one meter antenna is because we are targeting the basic service and also HVS1. UMICAST is split into three distinct services. We have the basic service, HVS1 and HVS2. They correspond to different data rates and different products. We are only targeting the basic products in this video and so we've chosen a one meter dish. If you wanted to receive HVS2, you would need a larger dish of size minimum 1.8 meters. But again, this changes depending on your geographic location. So make sure that you reference the UMICCAST document on our website. Now that we've assembled our antenna, we need to point it at the satellite. We're targeting UTEL Sat 10A. In order to do this, you can use an app like Sat Finder, which is available on both Android and iTunes, but you can use whatever works for you. Using the app or our dedicated antenna pointer, we're gonna point our antenna to the approximate location in the sky where the satellite is located. Again, we're targeting UTELSAT 10A. Now that we have our antenna assembled and pointed in the rough direction of the satellite, we're just gonna go ahead and connect it to our router and then to our computer. For this build, we're going to be using the TBS 5927 DVB S2 router, which is the cheapest option that is compatible with our UMIC CAS service. For a full list of the compatible DVB S2 routers, please see our website, which you can find linked in the video description. So now that we've connected our DVB S2 router, we need to connect it to our computer. There's a couple of different ways in which these devices can interface with a computer, so we should probably take a minute to talk about why you would choose one over the other. So the routers on the recommended list on our website interface with our computer in three different ways. So the first way that we have is USB, like this one right here. So you can see it's a USB 2.0 connection. The second type is via gigabit ethernet port, like this novel right here. So it has a gigabit ethernet interface on the back and one RF input. So in many ways, it's very similar to the TBS that we have right here, uh, other than the way in which it interfaces with the computer. So the third type of connection is an internal connection using a PCI Express slot. So this is an internal card here that connects via these connectors to a PCI Express slot inside of a computer on a motherboard. This particular model has two RF inputs, which means that you can receive the basic service, HVS1 and HVS2 at the same time. So each of these connections has pros and cons. So this particular interface type, USB 2.0, is the cheapest type of connection. That's why this device is so cheap. However, it's limited by bandwidth. So you can only receive, as we previously discussed, the basic service and HVS1. This particular device, the Navra, has a gigabit ethernet port. So it's not limited by bandwidth. We can receive HVS2 on this particular piece of hardware. However, as it only has one RF input, we have to choose between receiving the basic service, HVS1, or HVS2. So both of these models here are external boxes. They require an external power source to function. This one 12 volts, this one 24 volts. That differentiates them from this particular model right here, because this is powered by the computer that it's plugged into. The other thing that differentiates this model is that it has two RF inputs, as previously discussed. So you can receive both basic service and HVS1 in addition to HVS2 simultaneously from the E10A satellite. So each of these options represents a different price point and also a number of pros and cons. For this particular build, we're gonna do away with these two options right here and focus on the most affordable and most accessible option. So we've chosen our router based on our requirements to receive the basic service and the HVS1. And now we're gonna go ahead and connect it to our computer. So the first thing that we're gonna need is a computer. The second thing that we're gonna need is power for our DVB S2 router. So I have a nice adapter here. I'm just gonna plug it straight in. And that's turned on, working the way it's supposed to. Okay, now we are going to need to connect the router to the computer. We're gonna do that using a USB 2.0 connection for this particular model. Go ahead and plug that in. Okay, the other thing that we should probably have at hand is our EKU electronic key unit that we would have received from UMITSAT as a result of registering on EO portal. This is gonna allow us to decode our data once we've downloaded it via the satellite link. So we can set this aside for the time being. Regarding hardware, we have sized our system based on where we are geographically, based on the service that we want to receive. We have also chosen our router based on our targeted service. 
and we've connected all of the hardware up to our computer. So now let me guide you through the software installation and setup in order to receive your UMICast app. So having registered for EO Portal, you will have received an email with a link to all of the software that you need to download and install in order to receive your data. So following the link in the email that you'll have received, it'll bring you to this web page where we're going to open the software repository and choose the software for the operating system that we're running. So in our particular instance, we're going to use Windows. And we're going to go ahead and download the telecast software first. So once that's downloaded, we can go ahead and open it up and run the setup. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to input the credentials that we received via email. So this will be specific to your UMECast account. We're just going to use some demo credentials here. So if you're using a low performance machine, it's definitely better to store received files in separate directories in terms of performance. Um, but if you have a higher performance machine, you can store them all in the same directory in a flat directory if that's what you want to do. So we're just going to pick the service that we want here. We're targeting the basic service. So we're just going to go ahead and accept the defaults. So if you're looking for the configuration files, you can see the location at the bottom. That's where they're going to be stored. So we can just continue that and go ahead and install. And we can finish our installation. So this is where we're going to need to tweak things a little bit if we are going to use a specific naming convention or if we're going to block certain channels. For more detail on the file information and the file structure, you can look at TD15 on the UMICast webpage. So the next thing we're going to do is install the EKU software. So if you have a newer EKU, you're going to want to use a 64-bit version only. So we'll go ahead and get that and open it up. And then just follow through with the installation like we did in the previous piece of software. So for us, we're just going to go ahead and use the typical settings for this setup. Um, you can go into custom if you want to, but it's not necessary. Once that's finished installing, we can close it and get the next piece of software. So the next thing that we need to do is download and install the drivers for our DVB device. So for us, we are using the TBS5927. So we're going to go down to the setup guide, open that up. And we're going to look for the link to the driver page. So we are looking for version 1.0.0.3. So we'll go ahead to the download page and try and find that. On the page, we are going to look for TBS TV Tuner USB. We'll go into that. And then we'll find our model. And now we're looking for our driver version. So we'll download the latest driver for that. So we're just going to go ahead and extract that then. And now we can set up our device. And finish up with that. So we're going to go ahead and get the IP tool as well, because it allows us to configure the PID channels on the device. So the PID channels allow us to separate the UMICAS reception into its individual channels and access the different data that we receive. So again, just following the installer for this piece of software. And finish up. So for our device, instead of an IP tool, we're going to use BDA Data X. And in the table of contents and also the setup guide, uh, you can see how to do that properly. The other thing that we're going to find here is how to tune the PID values to get the data that we want. There's a guide on how to do this for each of the approved devices on our web page, and you can check out the appropriate one for the device that you're using. So now that we have the Telecast software installed correctly, it's going to create these three icons on our desktop. So these correspond to the different services that we can receive with our EKU. So we are targeting the basic service, so we're going to go ahead and start that up first. Here, if there's any traffic, we're going to see it on this graph of the connection, and we're going to get an overview of everything that's coming through as well. There's some other pages that we can take a look at as well, like the statistics. 
and that is going to give us a summary of everything that's going on, including any missed packets or packets that didn't receive correctly. The other thing that we can take a look at then is our active channels. So on the active channels page, we can see everything that we can receive with our EKU. So another important page is gonna be the license page. So provided that our EKU is installed and working correctly, down here where it says host key four, there's gonna be a row of stars. If that's not showing up, there's either a problem with the EKU or it's not installed correctly. So the other important page is going to be our log file page, which is gonna give us a summary of all the events. If anything has gone wrong, we can see a nice list of that here. We wanna set our level to verbose and we can filter the messages via errors, warnings, or anything else that we might like. So there's further information contained on the help page. So we've set up and pointed our antenna, we've connected all our hardware, we've installed all of our software, and now we're receiving data from our satellite. It's being stored in the directories that we specified during setup. Now all we have left to do is to visualize our data.